स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so good good morning everyone so in today's lecture i am going to continue our discussion on the hamiltonian formulation of the condition for finding the extremals so we will con continue our discussion on the hamiltonian formalism formulation so this is a continued series of discussion okay so i am going to start our discussion right away by introducing the hamiltonian formulation for functions of several variables right so that will include the special case of function with one dependent variable so several dependent dependent variable variable case right so i'm talking about so let us consider a legendre transformation legendre transformation involving uh, the lagrangian of the form l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot uh, where my vector q bar is q1 q2 qn right and uh, so we will see that we are going to uh, so again uh, if our starting function is of this form uh, the first set of steps for defining the legendre transformation is to introduce new sets of variables so my uh, so so let me introduce the new variable p so let my pk the variable pk be defined as del l del qk dot Uh, where k is from one to to n, right? So I define my variables this. Let me call this definition as one, right? So this is my uh, my variable p. Now we can also using this one we can invert this relation to find to find q k in terms of p k provided uh, provided this uh, this inversion is possible. what i mean by that is certain uh, higher derivatives are non zero so one can be so one can be used to solve so it can be essentially inverted solve for qk dot in terms of pk in terms of pk provided provided uh, the hessian matrix has a non determinant non zero determinant where the hessian matrix m is described by uh, del partial to partial l partial to l of partial qi dot qj dot so this is my ijth element right so this hessian matrix is non singular or it has non zero determinant so right so this is the standard inversion argument for functions of several variable now so first we are so next we have to define another variable which is our hamiltonian variable right now note that while introducing the variables p and h we have used the fact that t and q are passive right so let me now let me now introduce another another variable let the n dimensional hamiltonian n dimensional hamiltonian is defined by h of t comma q bar comma p so instead of uh, so now this is with respect to these variables is defined as described in our Uh, towards the end of our previous lecture is minus l 
p comma q bar comma p bar right plus summation q k dot p k right k from 1 to n. So, n variable setup, n component setup. Okay. So, in in the I call this as my definition 2. Okay. So, in these two definitions, I have assumed that the the variable t and q bar are passive variables. That is, they, they are going to appear implicitly. So, essentially, my new variables are p and h. Okay. So, so from here, I can quickly check that this Legendre transformation. So, this is my Legendre transformation. So, this Legendre transformation defined by 1 and 2 is an involution. So, the first statement that I want to show is 1 and 2 is a Legendre transformation uh, which is an involution, which is an involution, Legendre transformation which is an involution, right. So, let me see show it how. So, again we take the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to p. So, note that d h d p k d h d p k is by definition. So, p appears both in l and the second term. So, this is going to be summation uh, j from 1 to n and then this becomes minus uh, minus partial partial l partial p j right. Uh, well, this is this is partial l partial p k and then from the next term I get plus summation uh, plus summation of uh, q j dot. So, partial q j dot partial p k where j is from 1 to n right times times uh, times p j plus uh, plus the second variable is uh, will be q k plus q k dot. So, I am using I am using the product rule note that note that I am using the product rule here in the derivation in the differentiation of h with respect to p k here I am using the the product rule ok. So, so now I can further use the chain rule that this is also equal to summation partial l partial q uh, partial l partial q j dot times partial q j dot partial p k summation over j. So, so, so finally, using these all these relations, I can find that del h del p k is the summation j from 1 to n of minus del l del q j dot plus p j of partial q j dot partial p k right plus q k dot. So, del l del q j dot plus p j times this and notice that this is the definition of p j. So, p j is by definition del l del q j. So, this is equal to 0. So, I see that this is also equal to q k dot right and and also notice notice that minus of h of t comma p comma well q comma p plus summation q k dot p k by definition of the Hamiltonian this becomes l of t comma q comma p bar ok. So, so, these two relations, these two relations show that, show that the definition of p and h to, uh, to my uh, older variable uh, t and q bar is an involution. So, so, so this Legendre transformation is an involution, involution ok or one is the inverse of the same map is the inverse of itself. Okay. So, then 
uh, so so let's look at this example in a well in a more uh, you know more applied framework so for example in newtonian mechanics my l which is the lagrangian is the sum of the kinetic plus potential energy so in newtonian mechanics uh, my pk's are denoted as the generalized momenta variable the generalized momenta variable okay and my l my l which is the lagrangian lagrangian my l which is the lagrangian right is defined to be t of t comma q bar comma q bar dot minus v of t comma q bar where the first quantity is in in the continuum mechanics is the kinetic energy and the second quantity is the potential energy right so this is this is the sum of the kinetic energy and minus the potential energy okay okay so so then uh, so and and finally my vector q is the position of the particle position of the particle at time t at time t so for example uh, for example consider a consider a free a freely moving consider a freely moving a freely moving particle of mass m consider a freely moving particle of mass m if if i am given the position vector q to be q1 q2 q3 freely moving particle of mass m with the position vector this uh, and these are these are my cartesian for example these are my cartesian uh, the cartesian coordinates of the position of the particle of the position of the particle right so consider a freely moving particle and in this case in this case my uh, so so which means that in this case my kinetic energy t of q comma q bar comma q bar dot is given by the following expression half m v square which is half m q1 dot square q2 dot square plus q3 dot square okay uh, here i am not given any information about the potential energy so let me assume that this is zero right so we see that my pk the generalized momenta is del l del qk dot which is also equal to m qk dot by the definition of l and finally my uh, my hamiltonian will be uh, will be uh, so my h is equal to uh, minus t which is the kinetic energy plus summation q k dot p k okay so these are my my new variables in the hamiltonian formulation for this example okay so if so let me call this as example 0 right and we can extend this example for j identical particles so for j identical particles i can write down uh, i can write down the same the same hamiltonian so j identical particles for each particles so i have that n this time becomes 3j for each particle we have three coordinate positions and hence we have the total degrees of freedom being 3j okay uh, and uh, where where j is the uh, is the standing for each particle okay so so then uh, let us now so we are now in a position to describe another form of euler lagrange equation right so let me now 
start with the so called Hamilton's Hamilton's equation. What are Hamilton's equation? This is another another uh, form uh, of Euler Lagrange conditions. Okay. Okay. We will see what is the advantage of Hamilton's equation soon. So now let us to describe the Hamilton's equation, we start with a functional. So let J be a functional. Let J be a functional such that J of Q bar is integral from t0 to t1 L of t comma q bar comma q bar dot d dt and where where my vector q bar is q1 q2 qn and my function L is the Lagrangian my L is the Lagrangian function and and my my vector q is uh, let me call, term this as q is if so i say that if q is a smooth extremal if q is a smooth extremal then it must satisfy the n euler lagrange equation which is partial l partial q k dot minus partial l partial q k this is set equal to 0. If q is, an Lag is a Lagrangian uh, sorry if q is a smooth extremal then it must set satisfy the Euler Lagrange equation. Let me say this relation as 1. So now I am going to introduce use Legendre transformation and introduce new variables. So introduce introduce the so called conjugate variables which are p and h conjugate variables. Okay. So, so I see that my p k which is also equal to partial l partial q k dot p k is partial l partial q k dot is the generalized is the generalized momenta. Okay. Okay. And we write down well, uh, we can start as we have just mentioned few slides back, we can always invert this relation to find q j dot in terms of p j's. So, so this relation can be inverted to give me q j dot as a function of t comma q j comma p j, right. Okay. So, my Hamiltonian, so this is my first variable. So, my Hamiltonian h of t, I call this as my Hamiltonian function, Hamiltonian function h of t comma q bar comma p bar is summation p i q i, right, p i q i dot minus l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot, okay. Now, let us see some necessary uh, derivatives out of this Hamiltonian. So, we see that if we differentiate Hamiltonian with respect to p i, the p i only appears, p i is an independent variable, it only appears in the first sum i from 1 to n. So, the derivative of h with respect to p i will give me q i dot and the derivative of h with respect to q i will give me uh, the derivative of L with respect to QI with a minus sign because QI appears only in the second term. So, I see that partial H partial PI is equal to QI and we also see that partial H partial QI is minus L minus QI that is from the definition of Hamiltonian. But but this is uh, using chain rule, this is also equal to partial L partial Q i dot of the of d d t of this quantity, right. So, the last is via the chain rule, okay. Okay. So, notice that this is this quantity is nothing but p i, our definition of generalized momenta 
and so I get that this is also equal to p i dot right. Well, the first one is this ok. So, which means so from these two I see two relations emerging that q i dot is partial h partial p i and p i dot is is well I have a minus sign here. So, minus so is minus partial h partial q i right. So, that is my that is my set of two equations and I call this as my as my Hamilton's equation ok. So, I call this as my so these two are the relations that we were after. So, the idea is to derive the Hamilton's equation we start with our Euler Lagrange uh, condition from there I change I transform those equations into the conjugate variables and from there I derive the necessary equations which are these two set of equations. Notice now we have two sets of decoupled equation for each i rather than having one coupled equation in terms of uh, in Euler Lagrange condition. So, what we have now is so by the way this is Hamilton's equation are also known as the canonical the canonical Euler Lagrange uh, equations in generalized in generalized coordinates ok. And we see that these are n Euler Lagrange uh, differential equations right which are now. So, for for i equal to 1 to n. So, the n Euler Lagrange differential equations I have been converted have been converted into 2 n 2 n first order 2 n first order uh, differential equations 2 n first order differential equations. Uh, so, and also to note that the derivatives of with respect to the derivatives of q and p have been decoupled right. So, in this setup the derivative have been decoupled. So, this set of equations are uh, are quite easy to solve and comparatively easier to solve than the Euler Lagrange equation ok. So, then finally, I end this discussion by mentioning that the solution that we obtain. So, the solution the solution that we obtain q bar comma p bar is a unique solution. So, let me call this description by 2. So, is a unique solution to 2, it is a unique solution to 2 provided provided the Hessian matrix has a non-zero determinant or uh, or this sort of a Hessian del q q 1 dot to del q n dot by partial uh, p 1 to p n this hessian is uh, is non zero the determinant of this hessian is non zero right ok. Uh, let us quickly look at how to use Hamilton's equation in finding the extremal of a functional. Uh, so, the example that I have in mind is that of the simple pendulum. So, again we have a pendulum standard uh, standard blob of mass m which is which is hanging by a rope of length l. So, this is my rope of length l and the angle that it subtends let us say that this is phi of t right and let us say that the position coordinate is x comma y at any point of time and so this is m. So, I am not going to write down the statement, uh, but rather state the functional directly. So, in this case I have to minimize the actional action integral which was described few lectures back. So, j of phi is integral of the sum of the, well the integral of the Lagrangian which is m l square phi dot square by 2 minus m g l 1 minus 
cos phi right uh, times times d t m g l 1 minus cos phi times d t and we see that we see that uh, my Lagrangian let me call this as a my Lagrangian is l of t comma phi comma phi dot this is m l square phi dot square by 2 minus minus m g l m g l uh, cos well m g l cos 1 minus cos phi. So, that is my Lagrangian and from here uh, before I use my Hamilton's equation to solve let us look at the solution via the Euler Lagrange. So, recall so that has already been done earlier few lectures back. So, recall the Euler Lagrange machinery provided this following relation. So, d d t of del l del phi dot minus del l del phi is equal to 0 and I see that this is also equal to d d t of well del l del phi dot will give me m l square uh, m l square phi dot m l square phi dot uh, times with with a minus. So, del l del phi will give me will give me plus uh, plus m g l plus m g l sin phi right and this is set equal to 0. I take the necessary derivative I see that this is also equal to phi double dot uh, plus g by l sin phi right. This is also equal to 0 and we see that this is. So, this is my uh, standard the standard pendulum equation that we derived from Euler Lagrange earlier ok describing. So, we, we, we solve for the angle phi we have done that earlier. So, let us see what happens when we use the Hamilton's equation right. So, so now I am going to use the Hamilton's equation for that I have to set up the conjugate variables right. So, my p this is a one dependent variable problem. So, my p is partial l partial phi dot and by definition of Lagrangian it comes out to be m l square phi dot right. So, from here I can see that phi dot is equal to p by m l square right and secondly my Hamiltonian h of phi comma p comes out to be p phi dot minus l and from here I can I can uh, plug in the value of the Lagrangian I see that and also phi dot I see that this is also equal to p square by 2 m l square uh, minus the Lagrangian which is well well minus the Lagrangian which after all the simplification we get the following ok. So, these are my two conjugate variables phi dot has been described in terms of p and now let us look at the Hamilton's equation. Once we have Hamilton's equation. So, the Hamilton's equation is partial h partial p is phi dot and the second one is minus partial h partial partial phi which is the dependent variable is p dot right. So, from here I get that I get that phi dot is equal to del h del p we differentiate with respect to p I get that this is equal to p by m l square from the de definition of Hamiltonian and from here I see that my p dot is del h del phi which is minus m g l sin phi ok. So, then uh, we solve this equation simultaneously we differentiate this equation and plug the answer in the first one to come to a point that that phi double dot is equal to p dot by m l square which is also equal to minus m g l sin 
phi divided by ml square m g l sin phi divided by m l square right. So, what we get is the following. So, from here my equation reduces to phi double dot plus g by l sin phi phi double dot plus g by l sin phi is equal to 0 right and that is the same equation as the Euler Lagrange equation ok. So, the Hamilton's equation in this case uh, gives us the extremal which is originally given by the Euler Lagrange machinery ok. So, let us look at another example in which the Hamilton's principle is specially useful. The Euler Lagrange machinery is going to give me an equation which is very very complicated. 